on this wonderful Wednesday. Make sure you guys don't forget to like, comment, share under this video and make sure you guys subscribe mainly. Make sure you guys like and comment under this video. So today I'll be talking about who is in my top five greatest international players of all time to ever step foot in the NBA. So let's dive into it. So at number five, I got no other than the passing maestro, the pick and roll maestro. No other than Steve Nash, Mr. Canadian himself. Man, he was, man, pretty much at his time in the 2000s, he was one of the purest point guards you could ever see outside of Jason Kidd. Um, you know, his uh, his flash, his flashing passes, it was, was, it was out the numbers. And a lot of people don't talk about it, but this dude was probably one of the greatest shooting point guards ever to step foot in the 2000s. You look at his percentage. Um, this dude uh, didn't take bad shots. He didn't take a lot of bad shots. See, now it was, man, he was basically a, a all-around point guard that can shoot, shoot the three, shoot the mid-range, can drive in. You know, he did that little signature one-handed layup, that one dribble. Where he would dribble the ball and then he kept going with one hand and lay it up. Kind of like similar to what John Morant kind of do sometimes. But, um, you know, he was all around point guard that can score, facilitate, uh, can take over games when need to with his scoring, but he was more so of a pass first type guard. But, um, man, Justin Kidd was, I'm not Justin Kidd, <laughs> Steve Nash was that guy. Like, literally, and, and what he did for the Phoenix Suns franchise in that stretch. Uh, ever since he landed in Phoenix, man, it was spectacular. He had a great run with Phoenix, two-time MVP. Uh, built a great duo, dynamic duo of him and Amari, and Amari Stoudemire, the pick and roll, unstoppable, man. Because you, you you gotta react to Stoudemire off the pick and roll, but then you can't leave Steve Nash throw the ball because Steve Nash is an e pure efficient scorer. And you know, I think he's a four-time 50, 40, 90 club member which is he shot 50% from the field, 40% from the three-point line, and shot 90% or higher from the free throw line. So this dude was was pure, you know, I mean, like I said, in the 2000s was, was, a, was a great, great era of basketball. So, of course, his MVPs were controversial, but, I mean, look at his stats, you know what I'm saying? I think he had three consecutive seasons where he averaged – more than 18 a game and then average more than like 11 assists so i mean i can't be too mad at that i mean like i said me and him got the same birthday so you know i'm probably a little bit biased but I'm number five <laughs> but no i'm like recognize skill recognize game i mean like i said man steve nash was that guy and if he was playing today's bro in today's league this dude would be a walking 22 and 13 easily right off the bat just because of how, how pure he can score the ball like I say, he's one of the greatest three-point shooters, a good mid-range scorer, and he can finish at the rim, despite him for his size and his strength. So he deserves to be on number five. Now, who I got number four? No other than Manu Ginobili. Shout out to Charles Buckley. Charles Barkley. <laughs> uh, man, Manu, man, pretty much embraced the Euro step. Uh, when he started footing the league, because a lot of people forget, I'm gonna put some history on this. The first person to really, to really do the Euro step and re really done it at a consistent rate was Rod Strickland, Kyrie Irving's godfather. So look at the highlights, and pretty much you guys will understand why I'm saying that. So uh, back to Mario Ginobili. Uh, pretty much, um, he was a, a huge impact to the Spurs franchise, a positive impact. Um, one of the greatest six mans of all time. Um, a great slithery finisher at the rim. Uh, aggressive finisher can give you can give you a few posts here and there. Um, great IQ for the game. He has great IQ for the game, man. Um, great passer. I mean, like he can like I said, he can score on all three levels: threes, mid range, driving in, and you know with that that 
that trio of him, Duncan, and Tony Parker uh, well, was a great trio for the Spurs run. I mean, never missed a playoff pretty much ever since. The Tim Duncan era, when Tim Duncan got to the league and Parker got to the league and Ginobili got to the league, every single year since then, from 97 to whenever uh, Tim Duncan retired, they haven't missed the playoffs. So, um, you know, man, I say, man, Ginobili was that guy. And then, like I said, to, to average 20 points off the bench is crazy. That's literally a starter's type stat. But you average 20 points off the bench. It's insane, bro. And like I say, his accolade speaks for itself. Might not be a long accolade, but you can look at his highlights and look what he did for the game and for that franchise. I mean, hell, James Harden was a big fan of Ginobili. It says a lot about Manu Ginobili. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, Manu Ginobili deserves to be my number four on my list for sure. And number three, no other than the Greek fleek, Giannis Antetokounmpo. We know about him. Dominant score, been dominant since 2017, pretty much ever since. Like I said, like I said in my uh, last video on my all-time power forward list, ever since LeBron left the East, Giannis just took that took that opportunity to dominate and took over ever since then. Two-time MVP, um, championship champion. Um, like I said, one of the most dominant inside scorers we have in the league today. A uh, good defender, a good blocker, a good shot blocker. Um, I feel like he got a lot better. At uh, shooting the mid range somewhat, uh, he's starting back to being a little bit more efficient in that department, especially on the block, uh, a little bit, you know, on the wing, but more close to the rim, mid range type shots. And, um, you know, I, I like I said, man, Giannis' impact on the game for the, for the Bucks franchise has been tremendous. You know, a guy that can go coast to coast, lengthy uh, frame, uh, wingspan is, is incredible incredibly long uh you know like i say he's i mean and then he, like i say he, he he's just dominant he's just pretty dominant man and like i say he's very agile as well too so him being agile and dominant you can't you can't really stop that so Giannis, i think the cool pose deserves to be my number three on this list and number two no other than nikola Jokic, the joker a great all-around uh, international player, um, generational talent. Man, he can score the ball. He's pretty much a point center. Can facilitate, set up the offense. We've seen what he can do pretty much this year's playoffs. You know, unfortunately, they got out the second round against the Timberwolves, but he was still dominant in that series. But, man, Jokic, man, pretty much no more really saw him being this darn good. But... You know, with the type of offensive IQ he has, the, the feel for the game, I would say him and Luka has the one of the greatest deceleration moves when they get to the rim because they play at their own pace. So you can't really just make him not play out of his character. And, you know, like I said, another guy that can score the three, shoot the mid-range, a good, a good post-up score, uh, use his size well. Um, like I said, man, Jokic, man, he a three-time MVP. I mean, I mean, Hey, I ain't mad at him, <laughs> for sure. But like I said, man, like him being a point center, a center like him, that could set up the offense and facilitate and make the defense have to scramble and adjust too many times is already a gem for any team offense. So, man, Jokic, man, like, like I said, Jokic is a walking bucket, a walking facilitator. <laughs> um, like I said, he's not a lot. He don't let anything get to him, play the games within himself, and – um. I say his accolades and stats speak for itself. So he deserves to be on my number two on my list. And lastly, no other than number one on this list. Anybody, everybody should put this man on number one on this list. Hakeem, the dream of Lonzo one. No said about him. I mentioned about him in my last video. Uh, you see the highlights right here. Um, you know, versatile scorer, versatile defender. Um, one of the greatest shot blockers, post defenders, post scorers. I mean, this dude had it all, man. And, you know, pretty much the first big I've seen growing up, highlights watching as a kid, to have such elite, outstanding footwork in the post and throw defense off the uh, game in the post and everything. So that's my top five international players of all time on my list. 
comment below who y'all got in y'all top five. If you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe, do whatever you gotta do. I love you guys. Let keep the channel growing. Jay Boogie is out.